Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Dragon Air video. Guys, today in this video, we're going to be looking at the tips for total noobs. So, players like me who do not understand yet how to fully play Dragon Air, we're going to be bringing on Never from the HH Gaming team, who's got his own YouTube channel. He's one of the top players in this game. And he's going to talk us through some of the things we should do, some of the things we should avoid, and get us ready for season two, which is coming around the corner. Now, Dragon Air. Uh, launched what coming up for six weeks ago i think now it's had over 10 million downloads already is available to be played on pc through steam and epic games on a mac on your android on your ios it's literally anywhere and you can play the same game across devices super cool you can download it use the link down below it does support my channel get involved we do have a section on my discord as well where we were talking all things dragon air any videos that get released from Never or myself go into that section as well. Saf's also playing it a lot. So there's quite a big group of the kind of Hell Hades community that are involved in this game. I would suggest that you should do the same. Get involved and um, yeah, we can have some fun with it. Anyway, I'm going to invite Never on and let's get this discussion going. And today we are joined by one of the professionals that plays this game. One of the best content creators that covers this game. Uh, Never, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. Thanks. How are you? Yeah, really good. Look, good. This is like the perfect video for me, honestly, because what we're going to talk about today is top tips for noobs. And um, I'd say I'm still probably in the noob camp. And obviously, never you've been playing. I mean, talk us through how long you've played for and, you know, how addicted you are to this game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I started on Global Launch, obviously. I think it was the 19th of September or something like that. Um, and my season is just coming to an end now so we've just killed yeah. the last boss of the season so uh, realistically i don't have anything to do at the moment and i guess that shows the addiction because i am missing things to do <laughs> um yeah so yeah no I, I am really enjoying the game it's uh it's been a breath of fresh air and uh i'm really excited for season two so well i guess i guess where we'll start then is is this kind of like seasonal change because yeah. this is probably new to anyone who's who's new to this type of game and you know, with Dragon Air, it does it does kind of like have this almost quite a hard reset when you go from season one to season two, etc. Yep. Um so I guess a question. Let's let's take an account at my level right now. Okay. I've got a pretty decent amount of heroes, tons that I still have not leveled up and, and kind of made use of yet. Yep. I've got a pretty terrible amount of gear. <laughs> and you know and i've got some things to use like i've got a couple of scrolls to upgrade skills and stuff like that so i guess what's the priority at this point in the season we know that season two is like what a couple of weeks out if yes that... i think it's like nine days away oh, what date is it today it's the fifth so about 10 days nine ten days until yeah. it's released so, so what would you say for because this is going to come up again and again for people that are coming towards the end of a season what do you do what do you focus on at this point so for an account at my point i obviously have cleared all of the seasonal content the only thing left for me is fame and and pillar of trials so this downtime i would use to finish up everything you can that you've still got available so sure. whether that be um farming well ba basically do things that are going to give you resources going into next season at this point because yeah. a lot of the things get reset so there's not a huge amount of point farming gear at this point um Obviously, if you still need to build heroes, spend some time in Goblin, build up some heroes, but only do that if it's going to benefit you going into the new season. Yeah, um, because just my question on that is, so I've got my Dritz tier. Yep. Come season two, am I right in thinking he goes to level zero? Yes. So anything earned from energy will go to zero. So anything you farm yeah. to level up your heroes, any gear, it all goes. And, um, and all of the resources you've got from the Goblin raids. Yep. They so disappear at this yeah. point. Yeah, it all goes. So you can't like pre farm a load of stuff to level things next season. Yeah, it's just not, there's, there's no point in, in kind of like burning stamina here in the Goblin Raid, kind of, you know, basically getting myself. I, I can't get ready, is what I'm saying. Like, I, I can't get ready in terms of stockpiling resources. No, so you can't prepare your teams. But what you can do is you can get ready in terms of picking up resources. So you could farm some more. Um, well, obviously any summons they all carry over yeah any of your gems obviously the worm arrow stuff that all carries over okay um any scrolls and stuff so basically in 
Fame Meander and Pillar of Trials, you'll be able to get some scrolls. Yeah. They can they will all carry over. Just like anything you've used scroll wise will carry over. Okay, but... so I, I could like level up skills on the heroes that I'm currently using and and probably more so on he uh, heroes that I definitely think I'm gonna want to build out for next season if See, I want to get that, like a flying start. That's the thing. At this point, I wouldn't use scrolls on heroes that you aren't certain of. So obviously at the moment you may be using like a fire and poison team, for example. Yeah. They're not going to be paired together next season. So before you scroll anything, really look at what next season's going to hold. So obviously okay. Frost is going to be with uh, Radiance, Fire's going to be with Necrosis, and Lightning will be with Poison. Yeah. So before so, you so, think so about... So maybe, maybe we touch on that, because I know that this is a major point and we, we've spoken off off um, video here, but yeah. the elemental kind of allegiances is massive in this game, right? So, Absolutely huge, yeah. Yeah. So I guess talk us through how maybe if i'm going to redeploy here and we'll kind of take a look at the whole kind of elemental tree yeah so new season means new kind of like groupings that's what you're saying just there yep. so yeah the poison so if you example, don't the go inner anymore. three the inner three on this screen here they're all going to move once to the right oh i see okay so nice. lightning will go to poison fire will go to necrosis and ice will go to radiance yeah so basically all of the teams you've built this season they're not going to work next season. You're going to have to change it up completely. Unless... How do you feel about that, by the way? Just I love it. Just yeah, absolutely yeah. love it. And the reason, the biggest thing for me is ice heroes, which I've been, I want to say fortunate, but at the same time, I want to say unfortunate. Unfortunate. To, I've yeah. pulled quite a few, so I've okay. got something like five ice elemental legendaries, and have you? Nice. yeah, and they've got very little support and tank options, whereas Radiance has some of the best support and tank options. Sure. So this season where my ice stuff's been pretty limited where in terms of what I've been able to use it for, next season it's going to have the opportunity to push into some PvE content because I've got a tank who's viable, I've got a healer who can cleanse and is viable. Yeah. And, and, and oh, sorry, I was say, on. so yeah, once you get into a position where you're trying to take down a specific bit of content, so mm -hmm. are you looking to try and always have five elemental affinity or there's, Are you happy with three or, or there's a few know. situations where I'd argue three is enough. Um for, for biggest, later game content, right? Because so far yeah. I've done everything that I'm doing with three. So yes and no. In in later game content, like let's say the last month of the season where you're looking at the um otherworldly bosses and you're looking at the um copper dragon, you're you're gonna need the bonuses there. You literally right. You won't survive without them. You won't do enough damage without them. And okay. more to the point, there are certain areas there where you are quite literally tied into those elements only. So there's six rotating bosses, one for each element, where they'll take 100% increased damage from those elements. So Oh, interesting. Okay. So you end up needing six six full teams yeah. Yeah, to be yeah. able to get that done. Wow. That's actually a lot of, a lot of heroes. Yeah, so um, you, you want to build at least, obviously, two to three damage dealers for each element at a bare minimum, and then, yeah. obviously, tanks and healers to support them. Um, so, yeah, it, it really is important to get the five elemental affinity bonus. The yeah. only caveat I'd say is maybe earlier in the game, when you're kind of pushing through dungeons, maybe just making sure if it's a damage-heavy dungeon, you need to make sure your tank's got it so you can survive. Right. Uh, just the three times bonus, obviously. Yeah. Um, but if it's quite a tight damage check, then maybe you need to look at bringing, just ensuring that your damage dealers are all from the same element, so they've got the bonus. Okay. And and so, if you're early a game, just interesting what you just said there. What I tend to do in games like this is I tend to focus on my damage first in terms of leveling, yep. and gearing, and then I focus on support and tanks second. Yep. Are Are you saying that's is that the right avenue, or would you actually flip that? Yes and no. <laughs> so in most areas, yes. But the first dungeon that you're going to be progressing in Dragonair is Grave of Venom. And the yeah. key to Grave of Venom is your tank surviving. Um, I'd okay. argue that the first thing you should take up to level 100 is your tank because that kind of enables you to farm stage 9. Because a level 100 tank with decent gear will be a, it's kind of the, the break point where you can start surviving that boss. Right. Um, Saying that, they're changing all of the skills in the new season, so I don't know how that's going to impact it. But this season especially, your tank survival on that boss is literally the key to success. And and you would say this is the 
the number one place to farm gear early on. For yeah, because yeah. obviously, like I said, how many teams you need. Each of those has damage dealers, so you're yeah. going to need to get a wide range of damage gear, whether it be the Executioner set that ignores defense, the Gambler set that does max HP damage, or if you're building derivative damage, uh, damage dealers, the um, Platinum Knight set. Yeah, uh, Obviously, that's only relevant once you've got legendary gear, but at the point of the season, if you're playing regularly, you will have it. Sure. Um, and obviously, I know you don't at the moment because you've been so busy. But <laughs> Yeah, um, but, but I was going to say, like, what stage would you actually consider it's worth farming like properly i know we won't do it this season now there's not enough time left but so what stages what, would you actually farm to to say yeah i can get some cool stuff here so realistically when it comes to farming gear what you can do is you can kind of you push grave of venom until you can't anymore yeah at that point you then use that gear you go to grave of um grave of curse and you farm tank gear from there once okay. you've got that tank gear, you can go back to Grave of Venom and that will help your tank to survive. So you can then push into the epic gear. Sure. Then once you get to your kind of benchmark there and you can't go any further, you do the exact same. You go back to Grave of uh, Curse and you get some epic tank gear. And then you'll be able to push into legendary gear. Yeah. At the start and... of the season, you yep. get half the amount of drops of legendary gear. It's, I think it's like 20 days in or something, they double the drops of legendary gear. Oh, do they? That's interesting, yeah. right? So yeah. that... At that point, that's when you want to farm gear. So you want to basically make sure that you've got stage nine teams ready for that point and stay, save all of your like extra energy and stuff until then. Yeah. So you've got a nice little stockpile. And as soon as that change comes in, you just farm. Sure. So, so but, let's, let's, talk about, let's talk about hero power then, because okay. you've got a number of different things you can do. You can level. You've got scrolls to improve their skills. You've yeah. got gearing. Uh, you've got affinity bonuses. Like, where are you starting? Where, where do you start to gain enough power to clear stuff? And then, you know, what what's next? Like, what's what's your order for um, priority? I guess. In terms of what, so obviously, well, so I'm leveling... thinking like in in two weeks we're all level one again, right? So, yep. would would so... you be like, okay, I'm going to try and push my hero's level first, or is it like actually I need to get myself into gear dungeons, or you know, what what's kind of like your priority? What are you going to start with? realistically i'm going to start by building five five heroes so i'm going to pick out my kind of beginner team and i need them to make sure that they can a clear the first dungeon to a, de a decent standard i need them to be able to clear goblin layer to a decent standard and i'm yeah. going to need them to be able to do the vortex boss so got it. i'm going to need to make sure basically i've got a tank i've got a healer and i've got at least three damage dealers and um, do you already have yours in mind is it like i know exactly where i'm going to start or, or is yes it, and you no. wait to see what happens so I love the idea of being able to finally use ice. So I've got a little bit of a plan in mind. Um, obviously, this is the first time that I'm, I feel like I'm really going to be able to use my ice team properly. So I've got a Radiance tank and healer that I will probably be leveling with three ice damage dealers. But I am saving all of my shards for the new season. How are you? Yeah, so that could change with all, obviously all the new heroes so coming in. Are you doing that because there's going to be a whole bunch of new events and like you, you should gain more rewards and stuff like that? Or are you just doing it for like a big hurrah? Honestly, video? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. No. Okay. Um, so I, I just hit Pity um, a few weeks ago and I figured, is it worth me trying to get another legendary this season or is it worth me just pooling everything? Obviously, I'll get my content creator rewards towards the end of the, well, any day now, really. Yeah. Um, so I'll be able to kind of, have hopefully a mass summon at the start of the season. Um, sure. And with there being, I, I think it's like 17 new legendaries or something they said, there's uh, new summon events as well that are going to have the new heroes. And I figured it's quite a fun time to be able to yeah, just kind of splurge yeah. a little bit there and hopefully pick up something <laughs> new because there's yeah, yeah. three new damage types coming as well. So yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah. So realistically, I've got a plan, but it might not stick. Okay. Well, I just want to get back to like in, improving power. Yep. And I just want to touch on gearing. So do you have like a model for how for what you're looking for, how you gear? And again, I'm probably talking more early game than super late game here, but yep. um let's take my my drits for example. I think okay. I was looking for crit rate on my gloves. Yeah. Um, you know, I was looking for attack percent on my chest. And then kind of looking for 
attack, crit rate, crit damage on pieces that I could get. I don't have good gear. Like I haven't farmed anywhere near enough or so, forged enough or whatever. But like, Personally, what, your... at, at this stage approach? of the game, I value attack more than anything because things don't cost energy. Replaying is not an issue. So yeah. I would rather go for higher consistent damage with obviously the chance to crit. So for example here, I'd probably use attack percent gloves and I'd look I for crit you. rate and crit damage in substats. Sure. But I'd pr I prioritize attack over anything at the moment. Um, just because to get the crit rate and the crit damage, you're sacrificing so much attack at this yeah. point until you've got like legendary gear and you can make proper builds with high crit rate. You sure. just give up so much in order to try and hit that, which if you look here, you're wearing crit rate gloves, they're fully leveled, but you've got 31%. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so, why I was asking, actually, because I know yeah. in other games I play, so it's different. And, yeah, um, so I, I yeah. personally would be using attack, attack percent gloves and just trying to improve your consistent damage rather than that chance of a burst damage. Okay. Um, obviously, you can, if, if you really need to, you can replay and gamble for a kind of better chance, a better run. Yeah. But if you're improving the chances of landing, a, uh, of increasing your damage overall, it's going to yield better results for sure. the time being. And what about someone like a support? So I've got like a Varesh here. And... So Varesh isn't really a support. Yeah, but like, so I was going to say that like, Varesh is quite weird. Like when yeah. I was building Varesh, I was like, okay, his, his um, abilities... Attack with accuracy. Yeah, they is... they attack. Yeah, um, Varesh does an absurd amount of damage for a support. So yeah. um, probably not the best example, but it, with Varesh, obviously you just the biggest thing is the accuracy and then attack. Right. Okay. And um, what sort? So, so I'm not struggling to land anything in any of the content I'm doing right now. Yeah. With just you, 22. But uh, at what stage does that start to become a problem? Uh, probably when you start to get like around kind of account level 30, if you're playing consistently. Okay. Uh, you'll notice stages that will have a little bit more of a accuracy requirement. Yeah. And um, it's never like huge. Like the end game is kind of like 320 accuracy or something. And right. Okay. If you think, like, say you're using the um, artifact that gives defense down on somebody, for example, that's 72 accuracy off the bat. Sure. A legendary negative rune gives 96 accuracy. You're getting 50 from the elemental bonus. So realistically, it's not hard to hit. You will get enough accuracy. You just need It'll to always progress as you progress. In yeah, terms exactly. Of yeah, exactly. Um, I, I guess people may struggle if they've not had any luck with runes, but just a basic one you don't have to worry about the substats too much just get the accuracy on it for now yeah and and then in terms of a tank so uh is it this Him, guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah he's probably your best tank at the moment um but you just want to build with high defense high hp uh horus particularly is very well scaled from defense so yeah horus actually does damage based on his defense and um, he does shield as well based on his max hp so Right. You're going to want some HP and defense realistically, but you just need to make sure that your tanks are staying alive. So whether that be like probably, I'd say maybe 3,000 defense and then HP uh, at yeah. bare minimum. Um, there are tanks like uh, Garius and Furabath who heal based on their defense. So you want to rack those numbers up even higher. So it's going to be a bit skill-based, but like some of these other stats that aren't immediately obvious what they mean, yep. because we just don't come across them in every game, yeah. So, like, which characters, which heroes would you be saying? Right, I need enlightenment, for example. So, enlightenment, a lot of haste. healers, a lot of heals and uh, shielders scale on enlightenment, but also anything that says derivative damage scales from enlightenment. So, if you, right. uh, if I just look at your heroes here, I don't think any off the top of my head deal derivative damage, uh, but there is a rare. So, if you scroll down to the poison rares, uh, you see Eli there, the guy with the bandage far left. Second oh, yeah. row, yeah. So he, if you look at his passive, so his first skill, so he deals additional derivative damage whenever he's attacking something under poison. So with him, right. you just want a ton of attack and a ton of enlightenment. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, yeah. Also, I, I've not personally tested it, but apparently poison damage in general scales from enlightenment. Um, so really on poison heroes, you're building attack, you're building enlightenment, and you're building enough accuracy to land the poisons. Yeah. Um, but there are also crazy heroes like Flora, Avelios, uh, Shouter. Is it Shouter? It might not be Shouter. Uh, there's a Lightning Epic who does um, derivative damage. Let me just, yeah, it's Shouter. And yeah. on them, you just want to stack attack and enlightenment only. 
And and something like skill haste is that something that you would build out just if someone's got particularly good ult, or is skill it... haste is yes, you you want a lot of it on a lot of heroes. Uh, I've actually got a video that explains skill timings, and skill haste plays okay. a huge part in that. So, so you're, example, you're trying to make sure that people are ordered in in the right way to yes. Think to about it with like after turn meter tuning and raid, right? Yeah. So, for example, a boss, let's say grave of rot for example has an 18 second rotation for all of its skills sure you want to make sure that all of your heroes are going less than 18 seconds so you can give them oh, an 18 okay. second delay and yeah, time yeah. your skills to go at the same time same point each time interesting um, so, so when you're building out this you know you say you've got like six different teams for the for the big bosses you're looking at that kind of like skill interval and making sure that per team yeah. they, they make some sense yeah yeah, exactly. Like I said, I've, in the video I've done on it, it breaks down the requirements for each of the dungeons, so cool. you can obviously figure out where to tune them for. Yeah, I, I tell you what, I will link that video down below. Uh, also, make sure that you go and sub to Never on his Dragonair channel, because it's got literally the best information about this game. Um, okay, look, so we're probably running a bit short of time. Is there any call out that we definitely need to squeeze into this video? Honestly, not that tips I can think news? of. Um, Okay. I think the rest you kind of learn as you go. There's nothing glaringly obvious unless you've got anything that you can think of. Well, one, one question I was going to ask. So I got to this point here where it was like, okay, I unlocked the goblins. I start yeah. to find some of the kind of like domains where you get your crystals and stuff. And I've got to say, like, I fell off the wagon of just doing my quests because I yeah. started to be like, okay, I need to spend my stamina each day. I'm doing goblins. And, and would you say almost forget all of this stuff and just do quests. I, I feel like I got to a place, maybe it was this one over here, where I ran into like a 125 level mob and I was like, I just so can't you, get near that. What you've probably done is spoken to one of the NPCs because you can challenge certain NPCs throughout the progress. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, or it might have been the, uh, the ooze monster or something, was it? I feel, I feel like it was an orc, honestly. But... Okay, yeah, you've probably spoken to one of the challengers. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So don't do that yet. Yeah. Um, okay but yeah but, the, but the yeah, only you, thing did you like, just kind of like follow quest line like yeah, main so quest storyline if you stay on top of it the quests each day take maybe 20 minutes yeah um and then you can kind of worry about other things it's one of the things i wrote about in our review article that i actually hated the time gating purely from a, per like a selfish perspective of wanting to play more but to go more yeah yeah um, the yeah. only other thing I would say is probably worth calling out is the first, I think it's 10 days of a new season, you can reset all of your hero levels again. So utilizing that to test teams. Oh, yeah, and yeah, that's to, a great one, actually. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably worth throwing in somewhere. Uh, so I feel like season two is coming. Like, and, and this is the trouble with this type of seasonal thing for me. I was like halfway through when I started to really love this game. Yeah. And I felt like I'm so far behind, right? <laughs> yeah but and, and you are the season's halfway done yeah yeah so but now i'm like season two's coming up so i want to get a really good fast start yeah and and kind of get involved so yeah i just want to make sure i don't make the same mistakes again i guess yeah um, no it makes sense but yeah the, the biggest thing is at the start obviously the um dungeons where you have to upgrade your heroes they start to take more damage from heroes of that element so and right. so they deal more damage to a heroes of that element so oh, okay. say you're say you're running a frost and radiance team in the frost radiance dungeon. Yeah. After stage two, they'll start to get annihilated. So that's when you right. can use your reset, build another team, push that to do and this then, ah, exactly, and then yeah, use that to farm the other ones. Sure. Um. So it's just an easy way to kind of get your head get the head on everybody else because you've got a team. You can kind of rotate your team and push through different areas. Yeah. And do you know when season reset happens, are we still on this same map or is it completely fresh? So I don't know. So what's, the, what's basically going to happen is it's either going to be we'll play through this stuff again and then after the final area, we'll go to this new area. Yeah. Or it'll just be a continuation. So it'll be... Yeah, we'll so I'm wondering if I should area. just get my quest... Maybe I should just get my quest line done, open up all of the map. There's what a whole I, bunch of area I've not done yet. I'd do that anyway because the amount of gems you get from it. Right. So just push it as much as you can, pick up any rewards, just don't worry about using anything, just save it all. Yeah, yeah. And cool. obviously you'll have to use some to kind of advance your account to clear it, but I I would honestly try and clear the quest line because you also get the free legendary from it as well. Yeah. yeah so intense. just try and pick that up at least before the season ends. Awesome. Well, look, thanks for coming on and sharing some top tips. Um, 
as I say, like, I will put Neva's channel information down below as well as that video that he's mentioned because uh, there's awesome Dragon Air information there. I guess, yeah, Neva, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. All right, right. Guys, have yourself a great day. Enjoy Dragon Air. Can't wait for season two. We'll see you later.